Dwayne at realfixesrealfast.com. You know, oftentimes we stress gather the evidence, let the evidence lead you to the problem. Well, here's another example. This postal truck came in with an overheating complaint. You could start it and drive it idle, and it seemed like it'd do all right. It wouldn't run too hot. But if you'd go out and drive it, it'd just go up into the red and overheat, and it'd start bubbling and gurgling and everything like that. So we were suspecting a possible head gasket problem. So we did the test with the combustion leak where you put the fluid in here and it turns from blue to green and it never would change. So we're thinking it's got to be something else. Got to find different evidence. So we put that aside. We're trying to think what it could be. We take the thermostat out thinking maybe this thermostat's sticking shut. Thermostat was working fine. So thermostat's not the problem. We're still thinking what else could be the problem. We went in the back and kind of had the hunch that it might be the head gas again. So we did the combustion leak test another time. Surely it's got to be the head gasket. It didn't fail the test. So we're thinking what else could be the problem? Possible water pump. Maybe it's not circulating water. Now we knew that this water pump has this solid impeller in it, but you can't see it when it's mounted. We've got to get the evidence, so we took the water pump off, thinking maybe the water pump, if there's a problem with the impeller, but the impeller was fine, so the water pump was circulating fine. That wasn't the problem. Well, it's truly getting hot. What else could be the problem? We checked out the fan clutch, and the fan clutch was working fine. It's got to be the head, right? We've got to have a leaking head gasket somewhere. It's not leaking any antifreeze externally at all. It doesn't appear to be leaking it internally, but it's getting hot. So once again, we went through the combustion leak test. After three times, it never showed any evidence that it was a head gasket problem. We're thinking maybe there's a restriction in the radiator. So we drained the coolant out, we took the radiator cap off, and we're looking down, and you can see that the radiator looks clear. It doesn't appear to be all corroded or plugged up or anything. So the radiator didn't look bad as we looked down through and could see that it looked like it wasn't plugged up. And the next thing we have to do is do a flow test. So we take it out, and a quick test of that is to plug up this side with your hand or something and then run a garden hose through here and it should flow out just as quickly as it's flowing in but if it tends to want to puke it back out this way then you're probably restricted. It did not have good flow but it looked so clear on this side. So we took this side off so we can see the other side because you can't see it through any kind of an opening. And As you can see what we found in there as you look on this side you can see that this side of the radiator is plugged up. Not really sure what it is but it looks some, like some kind of a fibery material. We pull it off of there. Maybe it's some type of a paper or, or something that's got it plugged up. So when this was on here this is the return side. The coolant was coming from the engine coming through here and then it was trying to circulate back through the radiator and we were not getting any flow through the radiator. So once again, this concept of gather the evidence and let the evidence lead you to the problem proved to be the right thing to do. There were several times we were thinking here, well, it's just about got to be the head. If we would have followed our gut feeling or just the assumption that it was the head, we could have replaced the head, put it back in the car, taken it for a drive, and it would have overheated again because the head wasn't the problem. The evidence is telling us or proven to us that the radiator is the problem.